Now let's look at Board of Directors and the role they play. A Board of Directors is the governing body of a corporation elected by the stockholders. Inside directors are board members who work for the firm. Compensation varies from little or no pay to upwards of $25,000. Outside directors are board members who do not work for the firm. It's worth mentioning that often outside directors can be more objective. It's the duty of the board of directors to elect the firm's officers or top management. They approve management's plans and policies, and they also review performance and declare dividends. In the small corporation, a properly selected board of directors can be of real value to the entrepreneur. The board members can be called on to advise the entrepreneur on the solution of major problems. That is, they can act as, the, as de facto management consultants. They can also assist with policy formulation and redefinition of business strategy. The business owner should select outside board members on the basis of their interest in and potential contributions to the organization. Many individuals are potentially good board members and the best available talent should be selected. The purchase of stock should not be required, although such an agreement might make service on the board of directors an attractive proposition for a capable director. A board of directors can bring a vast amount of knowledge and experience to a firm, and they can also fill in the gaps in the experience of the management team. It's their job to, to typically review policy decisions, provide general direction, monitor the firm's ethical behavior, and mediate and resolve disputes among top management. A board of directors can also offer lending credibility to the firm. You may ask, why would investors tend to favor a new business led by a management team over one headed by a lone entrepreneur? Is this preference justified? Well, investors are concerned that management have a blend of important management skills and that the founder have the ability to perform in a professional way. They realize that the typical idea person who starts a business is deficient in some area of management. This preference appears justified for most ventures of, of substantial size. Many small business owners have never even thought of the possibility of using a board of directors. Some owners are confident of their own abilities and see no benefit in having a board. Others have misconceptions concerning difficulty in attracting board members and levels of compensation. Probably the greatest reason is lack of assurance that a board would be of real value. If an entrepreneur uses a board of directors as merely a rubber stamp, his or her small business stands to lose the insights of directors who can help the entrepreneur look beyond the next few months to make important, long-term strategic decisions. A well-selected board of directors can also bring supplemental knowledge and broad experience to corporate management. By virtue of their backgrounds, directors can fill gaps in the experience of management teams. The board should meet regularly to provide maximum assistance to the chief executive. In board meetings, ideas should be debated, strategies determined, and the pros and cons of policies explored. In this way, the chief executive is assisted by the experience of all the board members. Their combined knowledge makes possible more intelligent decisions on issues critical to the firm. By utilizing the experience of board members, the chief executive of a small corporation is in no way giving up active control of the operations. Instead, by consulting with and seeking the advice of board members, he or she is simply drawing on a larger pool of business knowledge. A group will typically make better decisions than will a single individual working in isolation. With a strong board, a small firm may gain greater credibility with the public as well as with the business and financial communities. All this potential advantage is lost when an entrepreneur does not use his or her board of directors as they were meant to be used. But for the entrepreneur that is against using a board of directors, there is an alternative, an advisory council. An advisory council provides advice but does not have the fiduciary responsibility for the direction of the firm. An advisory council is similar to a board, but members generally do not have a legal liability to the stockholders. Some individuals may be reluctant to accept directorships if they entail legal liability. Either system can function effectively. The advisory council system should be used if necessary to attract qualified contributors to the business. 
Also, advisory, advisory councils appear less threatening to some owners. This is the end of the presentation for Chapter 8 on the organizational plan, teams, legal forms, and strategic alliances. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it, and I look forward to reading your work.